uh, you know, is it is it a little more politically correct to have a gun? Oh yeah, <laughs> East, East Texas deer hunting season. You're kidding, right? On the other hand, if you're in something like the Republic of Massachusetts, or, uh, I'm sorry, Commonwealth. I, how soon I forget. I think you were closer. I was People's closer, Republic yeah. of Massachusetts. That was yeah. yeah. I, I'm sorry, Dave. I, I shouldn't be so blunt. <laughs> but but uh, and, and I don't. You know, look. If if people want to have a uh, uh, no gun policy, fine. I'm sure that that makes you know shopping for criminals just a lot easier. Well, I'm sure it does. Agreed. Uh, let's go to the lines and welcome Eddie from Cleveland on line one. Hi, Eddie. Do you have a question or comment uh, for our guest, George? Hi. How are you? Good. We're great. Uh, I did see the movie Lord of War. Yes. Great movie. Uh, he pretended to be a Jew, and then he actually met some Jews that were gun dealers. Do you remember that part? Yeah. That was a great movie. I, I wanted to mention, there is a movie, if you can find it, it's called Nine Rota. That's the number nine, space, then R as in Robert, O as in Oscar, T as in Tom, a as in Apple, Nine Rota. Okay. What's, what's it's, the plot line? Okay. It's about the Russians in Afghanistan. Ooh. Right. It, yeah, um, it goes on my list. Uh, yeah, yeah. You really, really, really would like that a movie. You're going to have to find a movie with the subtitles because it's totally in Russian. But if you are successful in watching it, it will change the way that you look at the war in Afghanistan. This is a very, very, very good down-to-earth movie about people that actually fought that war, uh, how they felt about it, uh, how hard this uh, Afghanis will fight. Yeah, let me ask. Uh, let me ask you something, uh, Eddie. Uh, after I watch that movie, is it going to is it going to make me want to stay in Afghanistan more and start supporting the administration on that, or is it going to make me say, what the hell? Uh, it will make you leave Afghanistan that day, uh, leave it to the Afghanis, and, and, and wonder why you were ever there in the first place. Yeah, well, I'm sure Russia has learned that painful lesson. We're just slow <laughs> learners, can't learn. You know, it's, it, it's like... Uh, the difference between a smart person and a dumb person is the dumb person has to make all their own mistakes. Guess what we're doing? Uh, I don't think it's so much a cultural we're making a dumb mistake. It's just uh, the people that are planning these things aren't sending their children over there. Uh, well, if, if, if I may say something, uh, there is a particular uh, part of this movie where uh, uh, a Russian captain is explaining to the to the young recruits that are going to go to Bagram uh, Air Base, which is the base that the Americans are using right now, yeah, and and how and why Afghanistan has never been conquered. I, I can't really explain the movie like they do, but, but I really, really, really recommend this movie, especially if you like Lord of War. You will definitely like this movie. And please let me ask you, uh, I live in the hood, okay? Yeah. When this, when this up-and-coming collapse of this paper economy comes, uh, uh, what, what do I do? Do I start? Do, do you have friends outside the hood? <laughs> no. No, Dude, you got you got to make some friends. Yeah, you, you got to get out of you got to get out of there because it's going to be house to house fighting for whatever resources left. Don't you agree, George? Yeah, un unfortunately, it, it's it's not going to be bad right away, Eddie. I mean, you know, we we see it when things like Katrina happens. Uh, people go to the iconic things of value that were sold to them on television, and by the iconic things of value, I mean you know they'll. They'll smash in windows, and they'll steal jewelry, and they'll steal big screen TVs, and then they can go home and watch themselves stealing the TV, right? <laughs> but that's really a dumb thing to do because if we get the kind of next leg down in this second depression, and I, I, I guess we could talk about the timing of that later on, but, but the, the, the problem is when social order begins to break down, uh, it's not. It's easy to restore order as long as the the police and the fire department and the sheriffs and so forth are getting paid. However, picture picture a situation where and we came we came close in California. You know they were talking about letting 
uh, inmates out of prison because they didn't have money, and, and so on and, and so forth. What will happen this time is that you'll probably start off with conventional Katrina Rita kind of looting. But then what will happen is a couple of days into it, people are going to start going for the, the gusto. The, the things that really will matter are going to be guns and food uh, at some level, and maybe, maybe gold and some cash if there's any available. Because, because what, what can happen, uh, and it did happen to an extent in the 1930s, uh, people uh, then had fallback positions. They could go back to the old neighborhood, and there wasn't house-to-house fighting. There was still the family unit. But what's happened now in the hood is that you've, you've got so much gang involvement, and the gang has replaced the family, and the gang is all about turf, right? And yes. and, and, and that that's why, gosh, Eddie, if, if, if you could, you know, find some, some friends or, you know, even, even buy five acres out in the middle of nowhere so you've got some kind of a fallback. Or, or even fi- find a cave. I mean, you don't want to be in a, the middle of an urban area. Yeah, the best thing to do is, is be gone. Don't be involved. Exactly. Where, Eddie, thanks where, for the where? call. We're going to move along and go to Ken from Fort Worth on line two. Hi, Ken. What's on your mind? Hey, gentlemen. Hey, you, you know what's that? Ron Paul's got 282 signers for the audit of Fed bill, and, and, and uh, Obama keeps talking louder and louder and longer and longer about other things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's just the distraction step. Oh yeah, because and, they're, and, they're and, in a panic over over 282 signers for, for the audit to Fed bill. You know they are. Oh, of course, of course. Sure. And there there are there are going to be voters in Texas like you and me who are going to call up our congressional delegation and say, "How come you're not all over this?" Right. Because and, not everybody in Texas is. There's there's a lot of old paradigm defenders. Uh, you, you know, I've I've got a theory that we ought to have a law here in Texas. And it should be in every state. You can't come back from Washington with any more money than you had when you left. That's a good point. Yeah, and, and they have to take the same health care they're trying to force down. And the throats. same and, retirement as the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Amen. And write your congressman and tell them to sign on to that bill. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. uh, hey. I may I may have a congressman over here in the fifth who uh, has been the poster boy for the credit card companies, saying that thirty three percent interest is consumer choice. I don't call that consumer choice. We call that juice loan. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, I still think that the reason why they're in a- Iraq and Afghanistan is to be on both sides of Iran, period. Well, that, that may be, but um, I, I, I think there's really a lot more to it. There's no doubt about it that uh, militant Islam is, uh, is, is out to take over the world. I mean, I that's, think what, so. that, that's what Dar es Salaam is all about. Sure. But but the problem is the, the way we're going around defending is creating the very marketing materials that we don't want them to have. That's a point, yeah. You know we're going we're going out. I mean, it's 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 a death dance between cultures, and and we've either got to look through the death dance and learn to do a different dance with each other, or we're going to you know unfortunately go to the mat together. It's going to be it's Islam against Christianity. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily just Christianity. It'll be Islam versus non-Islam, uh, yeah, and, and that's very that's very clear uh, in their doctrine. Okay. Nice talking to you guys. Yeah. Thanks for your call. Okay, let's go to Richard from Alabama on line three. Hi, Richard. Welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Uh, I, I have this worry that the reason we're in Afghanistan is that we have a secret agreement with China to help them get a pipeline route from Kazakhstan around the Himalayas and down into Tibet. And I think I'm afraid that at some point we're going to invite China into Afghanistan to help us, and then they'll turn north through Tajikistan and link up with Kazakhstan and build their pipeline, and and perhaps they'll forgive part of our national debt. Yeah, that could very well be. I, you know, that, it, it almost becomes Machiavellian, though, at that point. I mean, there are so many iterations uh, of, of things China could do. They, they can play us six ways to Sunday because we don't make anything in America anymore. Yeah, we're in a weak position. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. I mean, you know, that, 
we called it the Rust Belt 10 years ago. And, and when my wife and I go shopping for appliances and cars and, you know, whatever, we, we always try to find Made in America. It, it, it's a lost cause. And that's the problem. Fundamentally, America has uh, – well, let me back up. The fundamental problem is that we swallowed globalism as a mechanism of freedom. And globalism has never been anything more or less than paying people less elsewhere than they would have to be paid in America. That's just what it is. The, the rich guys pocket the wage rate differential and build empires in New York, while the rest of us end up having to deal with what's now a collapsing consumer shopkeeper economy. Well, not to mention that they also get to avoid paying their fair share of taxes from the profits they get from this practice. Oh, and you saw, of course, tonight that IRS is uh, talking about extending the uh, amnesty for the guys that buried their money offshore in secret Swiss accounts. Yes. Oh, uh, don't you love equal protection under the law? What, what's the old, uh, was it Dick Gregory said, uh, there, there's, there's equality and then there's some a little more equal than others? Well, Tim uh, uh, Geithner, Timothy Geithner, had to protect his own uh, backside. That tax cheat uh, undoubtedly has done that uh, same thing. We'll come back uh, more Poor with memory. George Ur. Yeah, okay, we're going to come back with George after a word from our sponsors and explore more of this corruption. Stay tuned, everybody. But, George, I want to focus for the next time that we have together here, the short time we have, is what's going to happen domestically in the United States in our short-term futures? In our short-term future, I look for it to be incredibly ugly. Uh, there's, a, there's a wonderful way of looking at markets called Elliott Wave Theory. And essentially, Elliott Wave Theory says that most of the time, markets move up or down in either three or five steps. In other words, the market may be coming down one move down, a bounce up is two, and then number three down to complete, or it'll be one down, two up, three down, four up, five down to complete. And so, or, or the other way, they'll go up and down reverse, of course. But, but 